Jordan Cowan says, hi, I'm getting into FPV. I'm looking to get a premium set of goggles. What do you think is the best option? I'm looking for walk snail and analog compatible. Um, if you have no intent to fly HD zero, then probably I would tell you to pass on the HD zero goggles, even though they are excellent goggles and can do walk snail and analog. It just seems like you're going to get a more compact package by going with a different set of goggles. Um, but then where does that leave you? Right? Well, uh, you could look at the SkyZone uh, O4X Pro that we looked at earlier with a walk snail standalone video receiver, and that's going to get you walk snail and analog. Um, you could certainly look at the walk snail goggles X that I showed earlier in the stream. However, as I said, the analog support for it is pretty clunky. For example, there's a missing, there's no DVR, and, and some people would feel that that was a deal breaker. Uh, if you use analog with the walk snail goggles X, you're also going to need like a ground station. There is not currently an easy way to mount an analog module on the goggles X. So I think the goggles X are not, they have analog support so they can tick the box, but it doesn't seem like a really great option. The goggles X seem mostly for people who are going to be doing uh walk snail. Maybe the HD zero goggles are the best choice. Like you've got the HD zero receiver in there that maybe you're never going to use, but they like I use the HD Zero goggles as my primary analog goggle, and they're a little bit kind of big and clunky, but they're they're good. They're great analog goggles. I would be mighty tempted by the SkyZone Pros that we looked at earlier in the stream. SkyZone Pros are a solid analog goggle. They're compact. Um, and if you had a good mount for the walk snail VRX, I think it could be a good package. I'm looking to buy my first digital system. I want clear image and some longevity in the product. I look to walk snail and not DJI. What's the best option for freestyle and video shooting? Um, if you want longevity in the product, I think for DJI, a typical lifespan of like a DJI product generation is about four years. Now, that's a fair amount of longevity. If you were to buy a Goggles 2 and an O3 air unit today, I think you could be pretty confident you're going to get another three or maybe four years out of them. But like people still fly the Vista today, even though it's not the latest and greatest. The V2 Goggles are slowly harder and harder to get. You can still get them on the used market. But I would say because of the lack of availability of the V2 goggles, I think like you can't buy V2 goggles new anymore. If anybody knows like some store that has them in the back of the warehouse and you want them, you better get them. Like, because I know, I know uh, wholesale customers, people who want to buy 10 or 20 V2 goggles for like some, they want to sell them basically, and they want stock and they can't get them. They just can't get them. So, so the V2 goggle is, is at the end of its life. It's not like your V2 goggle that you own will stop working. Obviously it'll keep working, but you're not going to be able to get it anymore. So, you know, what did it come out in 2000, September, 2019, I believe, if my memory's correct, is when the, the DJI V2 came out or the V1. The, the 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 DJ Air unit, and um, now it's 2023, so that's like four years, almost exactly four years. So um, you know that's a long time. So I wouldn't rule DJI out if longevity is your only concern. But uh, you know how how long is Walksnail gonna Walksnail is gonna put out a new product in August theoretically. So, but I think walk snail, there are, I'm not trying to talk you out of walk snail, like walk snail, uh, offers a lot of things that DJI doesn't offer. Um, the best option for freestyle and video shooting. If you want to record like video from your, from your FPV camera, the O3 is the choice hands down period. Um, if you want to use the FPV system to record on a GoPro or another camera, then walk snail is fine. Uh, speed limit challenger. Thank you for a $10 super chat. New to the FPV hobby and looking to mount my Insta360 Go 3 in which I came across the Flywoo Fly Lens Analog. What batteries, charger, and props do you recommend? 
uh, the Flywoo Fly Lens I recommend for micro drones. I start with whatever the manufacturer recommends because micro drones are very sensitive to the weight of the battery and the size of the battery. Like the frame will have been made to hold a battery of a certain size and, and the motors will have been designed around a battery of a certain weight. And so I would probably stick with or start with what the manufacturer recommends. And then you could you could go from there, but start with what they recommend. Um, and what they recommend, I think, is a 750 milliamp hour, but let me check. Do we have a battery? Battery. Battery. Uh, 550 or 750. So I think that the uh, we're going to go with a 750 milliamp hour because you're carrying that camera, so you need a little bit more. You need a little bit more power. And I would go with the 750 milliamp hour that they recommend. And as for the charger, this is a 2S battery, isn't it? Yeah, it's an XT30. Is it an XT30? It's a 2S, right? 2S, yeah. So you're, you're going to just get whatever charger you like. There, I would like just get a standard desktop charger um, on my website, fpvknowitall.com. Oh, good to see you again. Lipo chargers, uh, like just any of these chargers you can get. You're just going to use an XT30 to XT60 adapter. You could also get a parallel board. But parallel charging has its downsides, and some people don't like it. I don't know of any chargers that are dedicated XT30 chargers for 2S batteries. Same deal with the props. Use whatever props they sell it with uh, and, and start from there. Because they'll have tuned it in the way that they think it should be. Can you fly a 5-inch in a neighborhood, or is it too loud? Rob Dang. Um, I would not tell you to fly a five inch in a neighborhood because if you lose control and crash, there are many, many things that you could crash into and damage. Uh, that being said, uh, whether it's, if you have a good control and you fly safely, that's on you. Uh, as far as whether it's too loud, I mean, that just depends on your neighbors, <laughs> right? Uh, where I live out in the country, people set off fireworks. They ride their dirt bike down the road. Well, we don't really have noise complaints here. Um, one of my neighbors had a wedding at their house and there was a uh, really loud gospel music playing for, uh, all afternoon. And that's, we just live out here and we just deal with it. Um, if you're in a typical neighborhood, whether a five inch is too loud or not is, again, it's just going to depend entirely on your neighbors. I couldn't, I couldn't judge that. Um, Coil UFPV, thank you for a $5 super chat. I'm sure this has been asked before, but is it okay to direct solder to an 18 650 or 21 700? Yes, it is. It is okay. Um, spot welding will put less heat into the cell and be less likely to damage the cell due to heat. But for high current discharge, spot welding sometimes doesn't do the job. I've seen, like, if you open up a GEP RC 6S uh, 21 700 pack, there's 6,000 milliamp hour pack. If you, uh, that's not a 20, that's an 18650, but anyway. Um, if you open up a GEP RC 6S, 6,000 milliamp hour pack, you'll see that it doesn't have like metal, nickel metal bars, but it actually literally has wires soldered to the cells. Um, so uh, I don't know if they're spot welded. I don't know, can you spot weld wires? Um, some people will actually prefer to direct solder. What you need to do is you need to you need to sort of um, put abrade the surface a little bit, like with a file or with some sandpaper, buff up the surface so it takes the solder easier. And then you need the soldering iron to be as hot as possible, and you need to finish that joint as fast as possible. 